My name is John Gabrielli. I'm a professor in the Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences at MIT. And I've always been fascinated by how the brain learns and remembers, how we are uh, born as infants and how we acquire all the knowledge, all our values, all our abilities through education in school, through learning at home, through learning from friends. And in the last 10 years or so, I've been really fascinated by how our brains are variable from one person to the other and how it makes life easier or more difficult in the society and in the educational system we're born into. So I think of all infants as being born into a neurobiological lottery where the combination of their genetics and environment will make life easier or far harder for them to steer through uh, as they go through childhood and adolescence and into adulthood. And so we've been studying what are the brain variations that make children good at things or bad at things, that make it easy for them to learn to read or to pay attention or make it easy for them to manage their emotions or, for example, make it hard if they become depressed or anxious. And so many of these spring from these brain differences that we're now being able to visualize for the first time with the use of modern neuroimaging methods like functional magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI. So to pick one example amongst many, uh, a th few thousand years ago, no child was dyslexic, had a difficult learning to read because they didn't have to learn to read. Now you have to learn to read to access practically all of education. And so we're beginning to understand why about 10% of children really struggle to learn how to read. And what we're learning is there are brain differences present near birth that will make a brain be more conducive or less conducive for the language abilities that underlie the ability to read. And by this kind of knowledge, we're hoping that we can identify very early on the children who are at risk for poor reading and perhaps bring a support through interventions or educational policies and practices that will help those children flourish rather than fail at learning to read before they get help. So much of our educational system now and our mental health system waits for failure. We wait for people to be far behind in school. We wait for people to be in disastrous situations before we start to help. And instead, we want to create an environment in which we identify early on who's at risk for what sort of thing what, in terms of education, in terms of their emotional well-being, and then help them before they fail, catch them before they fall. And I think the combination of modern neuroscience, where we're discovering increasingly what are the brain differences that go with different strengths and weaknesses, and if we couple that with uh, educational policies that are oriented towards individuals, individualized learning, uh, mental health process uh, programs that are oriented towards individuals that are preventive rather than again waiting for great suffering, that we can make tremendous differences in the lives of children uh, by melding together what we understand about brain variation and positive outcomes for children. And so I'm very excited about how can we use all our spectacular new knowledge about the brain, its structure, its function, how it grows and develops. How can we use that knowledge to better understand not only how children grow and develop, but what we can do in terms of education and medicine to make sure that all these children really thrive as they grow up.